It's never good trying to get on stage in high heels and a dress. So thank you all very much and uh, it's great to be here this afternoon. I started, well my presentation is around the hidden revolution, so I started my career working in the built environment. I joined the industry working out on site. Uh, one of the sites I was working on very early in my career was a planned maintenance project in a housing scheme in Wood Green in Coventry. Very tough estate with high levels of deprivation and uh, unemployment, antisocial behaviour, etc. It was whilst working on that site, uh, some flats, I had a chance conversation with a single mother, uh, young daughter, who was desperate to move away. She wanted opportunity, and she felt that the area uh, that they were living lacked that opportunity. And it was really that chance conversation that made me realize that uh, putting new windows, new roofs, new kitchens and bathrooms into a house is not really going to address some of the fabric, the true social issues on that community there, which was lack of opportunity. So it was that conversation that changed my belief that businesses have a greater role to play in society and also changed my personal career path, ending up being sustainability director at the Weights Group. I've led, as uh, Caroline said, a number of kind of ambitious programs. And today, when I was asked to speak about social value in local communities, I was compelled to talk about my role that I've worked on in terms of bringing social enterprise to the fore of delivering social value in local economies where we've worked. Social value for me is about creating the positive difference both to the community and the environment in which we're working within. And I'm a passionate advocate for the social enterprise sector. The social enterprise movement is, here we are, a hidden revolution globally, but also very much here in the UK. In a world where we have declining levels of trust, austerity, and we're facing day-to-day -day issues of poverty, social mobility, youth crime, mental health, which are continuing to blight our society, I believe we need a new way of doing business. Social enterprises are popping up everywhere. They are a hybrid model which blends commerciality and positive impact. No different to any other business, they make profit, but the way that they distribute that profit to tackle some of the social and environmental challenges makes them different. It's a win-win on many fronts. Social enterprises are rooted in our communities. They are innovative, coming up with solutions which tackle society's most pressing problems. Over 50% of social enterprises in the last 12 months launch new products compared to only a third of SMEs. They're worth 60 billion to the economy, they employ over 2 million people, and they represent 3% of GDP. That's three times as much as the agricultural sector. But more importantly, they're diverse. 80% of social enterprises across the UK are led by women or uh, people from black and ethnic minority communities. My ambition is to ensure that more social enterprises play a part in our local economy, creating value on many fronts and delivering goods and services both for the public and the private sector. A couple of social enterprises that I admire are Blue Water, uh, make uh, bottled water and provide that to the hospitality industry. They turn over over six million with a gross profit of around two million and net profit of just in excess of one million, which they then distribute to water aid, who provide, uh, obviously, clean water for all. Another one is Elvis and Cress, uh, based here in London. They take Lond old London Fire Brigade product, the hoses, and make high-quality um, luggage, handbags, and other um, items. They've diverted over 200 tonnes of material from landfill, which would have gone, obviously, uh, which has helped look at a circular approach. And together with the National Community Wood Recycling, a social enterprise working within the built environment sector, which takes wood, wood waste from construction sites uh, to make product or sell into local community shops. For me, over the last couple of years, I've seen firsthand within the built environment the downfall of big corporations, the likes of Carillion, more recently Interserve, and the no number of others that are teetering on the edge who are delivering public services, both causing huge ripples to the public sector, but also their supply chains. So is big always beautiful? Over the last five years, we've seen some great momentum around the social value agenda with more focus 
more focus on businesses stepping up and leading. The Public Services Social Value Act, which Chris has very, uh, which has led, which Chris has led over the last few years, has been a catalyst. However, it's only for public services. So although the government spends 250 billion a year, there's over 6 million businesses in the UK here. So how do we lock the opportunity within those businesses to truly create more value in the communities that they work? I have three ideas to create greater change around social value in our local supply chains to stimulate growth. First is leadership, a social value charter for the private sector. Back in 2015, the financial services sector had a huge challenge around attracting, recruiting and retaining women within the financial services. The government asked the CEO of Virgin Money to lead a review. The outcome was the HM Treasury launched a Women in Finance Charter. It committed businesses to four simple things around um, putting, obviously, women at the heart of their recruitment, but also things around targets, plans, and public reporting. Imagine the change and opportunity if the government supported the launch of a social value charter for business, which puts social value and social enterprise at the heart of its procurement. Companies would commit to the targets and plans and publish progress on their activities. The Charter, for me, would create a movement of businesses, both big and small, who are committed to delivering social value locally. After all, the Public Sector Social Value Act is the public sector, where is the private sector equivalent? The second is place-based commitments. Place is one of the fa five foundations of the new industrial strategy. We know there are huge disparities across the UK in terms of productivity, which in turn affects pay, work opportunities and life chances. Different areas need specific interventions for inclusive growth. Four years ago, Social Enterprise UK launched the Buy Social Corporate Challenge, a commitment to spend a billion pounds with the social enterprise sector. Progress is being made and more companies are getting on board. However, we need to root this into, pla into places, getting regions, whether they're LEPs, combined authorities, local businesses, to lead on their own challenge. Imagine the opportunity if Birmingham, Bristol, Manchester, Leeds all set ambitious goals to spend with the social enterprise sector, catalyzing new businesses, facilitating collaboration, and addressing local and societal environmental needs. We need to shift the debate back to local, where people can see the power of change. Back in 2015, as Caroline said, I launched a similar challenge to the Waits Group for the business to spend 20 million with the social enterprise sector. In 2015, we traded around two million pounds with the sector. So a huge ask in five years. 99% of the people within the Waits Group had never heard of a social enterprise, let alone traded with one. The revolution began and this year the business will achieve its target one year ahead of schedule. And I continue on my mission to encourage more organizations to set bold commitments and be change agents. The third is incentives. Sometimes incentives are needed to stimulate change. Could VAT on goods and services provided by social enterprises be reduced? Could tax breaks be considered for social enterprises such as corporation tax? Could we invest in social enterprise regional hubs to catalyze that local economy or provide social enterprise rent rate reductions to really instill and hopefully provide a more vibrant for high street? Uh, within our communities. Social enterprises do provide challenges, same as any other business. The maturity of the sector, two thirds of the sector are under one million pound in turnover, creating challenges both for the public and private sector. Also, they don't cover every business service or region. They're very often local in a world where businesses are trying to drive efficiency through consolidating supply chains. They don't have huge back office support, so companies, certainly the public and private sector, have comprehensive uh, pre-validation processes. But change is occurring. The government legal department will be launching some uh, guidance to um, industry, both public and private, on consortia approaches that social enterprises can take to enable them to win bigger contracts. Access to finance, the number of SEs who require working in both growth capital continues to increase significantly. However, they're unable to access finance due to rates and risk. And uncertainty from the B word, as, we, as with any business in the UK, the B word continues to cause uncertainty, but for small businesses, this is often compounded. Every business creates wealth, 
jobs and contributes to the local economy. However, I believe social enterprises go beyond just making money. They think about the contribution they make to addressing society and environmental challenges. In a world where the current model is failing, we've got increased client demands and transparency. There is recognition that biz big is not always beautiful in every case. I want the public and the private sector to open their eyes to a new form of business which truly delivers value into local economies and builds stronger and more sustainable communities for the future, today and for the future. Thank you.